don't have to be speaking. So most of what we're going to be doing is group work in small groups of two to three people. To get into those groups, I would like you to first of all self-select around these five different interventions. So we're doing exercises working on one of five interventions. So each group will work on one of the five. So the first intervention is CCT for girls' education. CCT is a conditional cash transfer. This is a payment made to poor households in order to, in return for the household undertaking some behaviour. And the most common behaviour is that children, children in the household, typically the girl, has to go to school and typically has to attend 80% of the time and achieve a certain performance level um, in terms of grades. So a conditional cash transfer for girls' education. We've kept the intervention descriptions deliberately quite generic to give you some scope for in the exercises to work out exactly what it is you want to do. The second uh, intervention is community-based program to tackle GBV, gender-based violence. So these are typically programs done by NGOs to go in and do some community theatre often. Focus groups have discussions around the instances in which gender-based violence occurs to raise awareness of the unacceptability of uh, gender-based violence and, the like, and so on. So whilst CCTs might be targeted at the household level, um, these community-based GBV programs are typically at the community level. It's very different to the way gender-based violence attack in developed countries, which is very much more about individual interventions. Payment for environmental services are, we have them also in, in developed countries, have them in the US. These are basically paying farmers not to farm, but to do stuff that's nice for the environment. Yeah, so to pay farmers to do more conservation-oriented activities rather than traditional farming practices. Um, it might be modified farming techniques, but it might be not farming. In the European Union, we have the common agricultural policies, basically. Payment for environmental services is a large part of that. We have what's called set-aside. Um, microfinance for small business. So that's, that's very clear. Microfinance program um, small businesses. And finally, computer-assisted learning in primary schools. It's quite common these days as an alternative delivery mechanism is to put computers into schools with some software installed normally, um, some basic training for teachers to help assist the pupils, but they're meant to be self-directed learning, and the pupils normally work in, in groups of two or sometimes three uh, per computer. So there's a set of five interventions. So I would like you to get into your, into your groups. Um, we'll first of all ask you to go somewhere in the room based on which one you want to discuss, and then we'll split you into smaller groups depending on how many you are in each particular intervention. So if you want to have a discussion around uh, CCTs, conditional cash transfers for girls' education, please come and sit down in this corner over here. So you want to work on CCTs for girls' education, please come sit over here. Okay? Anyone want to do that? Come sit down over here. Okay? If you want to work on a community-based program to tackle gender-based violence, Top corner over there, please. Okay, gender-based violence up in the corner over there. If you wanted to work on payment for environmental services, please go over there in this corner where these three ladies are. Yes? And if you want to do microfinance for small business, go down in this corner. And computer assisted learning is in the middle. Okay? So let's just summarize again. Conditional cash transfers are down here. Um, Gender-based violence up the top corner over there. Payment for environmental services. In, where were you? Over there. Um, microfinance. I think you were down here? Yes. And computer system learning is in the middle. So there you go. So please sort yourselves out to where you, where you want to be according to what you want to talk about. Okay? This is, this is microfinance down here. Not a lot of takers for microfinance, it seems. <laughs> Okay, this is not a group. This back row there, that's not anything. There is no group at the top back row there. <laughs> Can you explain to her what's going on? Okay, you have to sit in a group. You have to pick one of these topics and sit somewhere accordingly. Amen. They're up here. Pick one of these five. You want to talk about 
Conditional cash transfers are down there. There are not many of them. You can go and join them if you want. They'll tell you what's going on. That's over here. Yes. Conditional cash transfers are down here. This is computer assisted learning here. Oh, microfinance is down here. Hey, it feels in microfinance. Hey, I've here, Phil. Where's microfinance? <laughs> You're in microfinance. Yes, what it takes for microfinance. So microfinance is down here. <laughs> well, you are if you sit there. You've got conditional cash transfers for girls' education over there. You've got community-based programs, technical gender-based violence is up there. Payment environmental services is over there. Uh, microfinance is here. And computer assisted learning is the big lump in the middle. <laughs> Conditional cash transfers, payment to households to undertake behaviour, in this case sending girls to school. That's there. Okay. Any text from my Emma, come to microfinance, please. Which is down here. You'll be with Phil. Okay, one. Do you just stay anywhere? Okay, we're going to hand out. Okay, the, the, when you've got more than four people in your group, can you amoeba like divide into smaller groups until you only have four people per group? You'll still discuss the same topic. But so computer assisted learning needs to split into three groups of four, or whatever it works out to be. So you've got three groups, or even four groups, talking about computer assisted learning. Yes? So CCT, so environment, you're PES, are you four, are you? Yes, so you're one group, you're fine. So you, you CCT people need to split into two groups, I think. Yes, one group of three, one group of two. I can't count anymore. Yes, there you go, two groups of three. You need to split yourselves up. Are, are you also CCTs? Yeah, we're getting with them. Sort yourselves out. So you want to sort yourselves out into groups of three or four. So divide yourselves up a bit. You can even go and sit somewhere else now knowing what you're doing. As long as you've got your group with you. Okay? Right. So you want to contaminate your neighbouring group. We don't want you guys all speaking to each other. Two separate groups. Okay? So you can even move around a bit. It's fine. Okay. So the first exercise... We've got here very broad, just about the intervention. The first exercise is to come up with a systematic review question for that intervention. Okay, so each group individually, so we've got two groups here. They're not going to talk to each other. They're going to work separately, you people, you people. So you'll get, we're both going to come up with a question, systematic review on CCTs for girls' education. So you might come up with different questions. So that's why you're not meant to be talking to each other too much. Okay? The business of learning guys, come up with a question. So a suitable question for systematic review. Better, can you brief the group people? If you've just arrived, you'll be told what's going on. <laughs> yes. Anymore, anymore. So you've got six now, you can choose groups of three. So you two turn around, you two
environmental services by paying the incentivizing good behaviour. Yeah. Um, okay. I guess I mean there's a number of issues in conducting PES projects because it's hard to f define a user group. Um, you have downstream users, but they can be widely scattered. And then the question is, who pays? And who pays who? Who are the farmers? Or if it's not clearly a defined geographical area, you know, who is the one doing the conservation or doing the detrimental activities? Uh, so, you know, kind of, no. Question. We need to start thinking. Oh no! Yeah, we need to start thinking at least in terms of PICO. I would imagine that that's where how it's going to go with this, at least in part. Um, population intervention comparator outcome. So I know most PES projects. A lot of them are in the pilot stages. It's a very new kind of initiative. And a question many people have is how effective is it? <coughs> Whether there's a design question and an implementation question. So. And when you're looking at effectiveness, there's outcomes in terms of environmental outcomes. So, do you maintain trees and um, uh, reduce uh, carbon emissions? And then there's some programs that are obviously have got a, a poverty reduction kind of element to them. So they're not just intended to have environmental outcomes, but a developmental set of goals as well. Hmm. Largely. The ones that I know about are quasi-experimental designs because of the problem of coming up with a comparison. Right, you need a comparison area that is different, yes. essentially. Um, so they go for a neighbouring area of forest that perhaps hasn't received uh, the intervention. So then the outcomes in that case would be... Yeah. Well, we're getting there. Oh, yeah? I think so, yeah. Good. So you now kind of uh, assisting her with it and to help us out and get started. Yeah, I'm right here tonight. Yep. I'm Wen from Support. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. 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 So, can... Sorry, what was that? <sighs> Not entirely, but I know outcomes. I was close because it was yeah. I It was probably a question. It may come back to me. Um, yeah. So there's two things up there now. Yeah. So it's the main review question. And then it Men det, vi ved jo, at det er et interessant spørgsmål, fordi vi ved, at der er for os Ja. Så man kunne godt have et spørgsmål, der, der, der siger, at det er ikke bedre for os som både som univers. Ja. Ja, fordi det, Jamen, det er ikke meget god mening, at altså, subquestions skal være, altså det er vel de der, de der stratificeringsspørgsmål, ja. typisk ja, at ja. kigge på nogle måneder på. Ja. Eller jeg tænker forskellige tidspunkter, altså om man kan se det allerede i anden klasse, eller... Det kan selvfølgelig også være forskellige outcomes, altså secondary outcomes. Man Jamen det er sådan noget som sådan... Ja. Altså vil det være sådan noget, får man det bedre socialt også, at man kan læse, eller et eller andet andet, ikke? Sådan nogle uh, spin-ups. Ja. <laughs> Så du ser effekten på en måde, der er om stigmatisering, eller at man ikke føler sig... Inklusion. Inklusion, det er meget moderne. Det er meget moderne i Danmark. Alle skal inkluderes. Det er gode. Øh, jamen, jeg tror et eller andet med the effect of city war, og så et eller andet med, altså, om det er conditional, eller om der er forskel mellem kønnene. Ja. Øh, 
Og også det der med over tid, kunne man godt tænke, hvornår instruktionen bliver brugt det. Jo, jeg tænker bare, at der kunne godt være forskel på, om man allerede fik den i anden klasse, eller om ja. den første gav udslag, når de kom i mm. femte. Ja, ja. Altså, om der var sådan ja, der er afhængig af, hvor man måske også er i den der læse. Ja, præcis. Noget, ja. Dependent on um, implementation Hvad hedder det tidspunkt? Så, altså, når det er sådan en klasse til implementation Which grading? Then you have to discuss the second question here, whether in addition to some questions, to review and answer. Okay. So in addition to the overall SR question, all other evaluation questions that will be addressed in the review. Uh, please, what you the first part, go on to the second one. Was this a randomly selective gender? So then the comparison would just be like what they were before, I guess, yeah. or like so clients of the bank without this microfinance. Yeah, so the do nothing or the status. Yeah. The status quo. So like status quo. versus the do nothing. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what outcomes are we looking for? Like, oh, expansion of the business or profit or uh, yeah, both. We yeah. could say ex um, expansion, better profits. So then I guess we, yeah, we can sort of construct the question around that. So what what effect does? Can you help me unfold? What effect does uh, microcredit have? <laughs> what effect does microcredit have on business uh, expansion and profitability? Yeah, this is the one to the first three questions. I'll be going down to question um, three to identify what the rows are, the cases, different programs for small business owners in the SR, and identify what the columns will be. Now, an example I gave this morning. It was a concept ordered as columns in the matrix, so they went by the steps in the causal chain. Mm -hmm. But you, you might think that other different questions, columns I want to have in there. What's going to be the fourth question is, where's the evidence in here addressing your evaluation questions? Mm -hmm. If we raise the question, the matrix will somewhere be summarizing the evidence for those questions. So think about the, basically the column headings. So you've got the rows and cases, what are your column headings? Do we need some questions in review? We'll have. Okay, so, so questions. So this could be where we put in um, so the, the different, different types of interventions. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the different types of apps. Yes. The what? What's that? The count? The, the row. Rows will be the different types of apps, interventions. Right. Yeah. When, when he's talking about possible, <coughs> possible steps in the causal chain, is that like a logic model? Yeah. Oh. Oh, your, oh your that's fine. I think so. I mean, I think that's what he was getting at. I think I think it cost me differently than what he thinks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're looking at our assignment was to look at a question, develop a question related to computer assisted something learning, learning in primary school. So we came up with um, 
Is there, what is the effect of portable digital devices applications uh-huh. versus traditional face-to-face classroom on math achievement grades four to six? Okay. And then we did about two sub... Two sub questions for that? Questions, so we based the effect on types of app, push versus interactive. Okay. And based on baseline ability. Okay. And now we're trying to come up with our matrix, our column labels. Right. Because the cases will be the individual studies is what his model is. So we would have we would have baseline well no. Then my question to him is for the sub questions we have different matrices matrix. A different Ooh. matrix. Would you? Or do the sub questions become columns? Yeah, I don't, no, I don't know what he wants. I mean, do you know what he wants on the count? He was not here. Yeah. This is his thing. So each of the rows is called the intervention. Oh, right. Not the study. Oh, yeah, right, right. No. right. But then you would have to put in more, if you had multiple studies, right. then you're filling yeah. those cells with the multiple, yeah. extracting, the one, adding them up. Mm-hmm. And it made a big deal that it was not the, the studies, but it's the interventions. Yeah. Okay. So, so each, you would have, like, have multiple studies in a row. Yeah. yeah. So then if so you're that's developing you multiple do questions. Rows. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so if you're developing sub questions and the sub questions relate to different parts of the intervention, right. then each row just becomes another intervention. So each, I'm sorry, each sub question becomes another intervention. Doesn't it? In a way? No, it'll become I mean, a new matrix. It becomes a new matrix? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, so I'm thinking you could almost combine them. No, because those are different interventions. Yeah. They could be different roles. No, we were talking about the sub questions. Would they be a different row or would it be a whole new matrix? Yeah. Because it'd be the same intervention, you're just looking at different things. Okay. Well, if we're just doing Pakistan, then we're excluding everybody else in the world. Well, I think that's just like one row, though. Because this is like studies that you code, okay. the individual studies you code. Okay. It's like a record thing, file maker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about the language. So they go, um, so this, I guess this will be the uh, demographic. Yeah. 
I'm writing on our sheet first. <laughs> uh, I don't know what other word to use, but correlate study. So, have we got evidence that girls leaving school at 14 instead of 16 are less likely to uh, achieve a certain level of uh, economic performance? over a certain period of time, that kind of thing. And, uh, you don't know why? And a health outcome, now you see again, one of the other things I recall about this particular In South Africa. was that one of the reasons being given to run this programme was that uh, the incidence of AIDS was lower among girls who stayed at school. So health outcomes would be another mm. Yeah. Oh, you want another column? I quite understand yeah. I guess, yeah, if that's an issue, yeah. I mean, okay. you want to, just you want to track column. outcomes. So that, well, I mean, the obvious, the proximate outcome is, are they staying at school? So attendance is one, graduation is another. And they're both very direct outcomes. And then health, health outcomes are indirect, but they might be relevant for the study. And if you set it up to to make that, to find out, that track that, uh, that outcome, you can do it, I guess. Too busy at school to get AIDS. Yeah, sounds I mean, like a good you know, plan. It's kind of rather you know, having them in the classroom rather than hanging around. But then you'd have to work out a logic model to see how that worked. Wouldn't it? Is that just <laughs> time yeah. and opportunity? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like the first one is not an outcome, right? Yeah, they're out. is an outcome. Well, these these are population characteristics, demographics. Um, so, what, what's what's the nature of the population you're trying to target? Uh, and then there are outcomes, with correlate studies, outcome studies. Okay. So you, you track people longitudinally over time and you, you say what kinds of outcomes are there for people who leave school at 14 yeah. versus people who leave school at 16. I know that's probably completely but, wrong. But in order to, like, yeah. but the, like the, in the uh, systematic review, you want to make sure that all those outcomes are addressed by each individual studies. Well, then you'd be looking for intervention studies that tackle these kinds of outcomes. Okay. So you'd have a question whether or not cash transfer mm -hmm. not only keeps girls at school, but prevents or lowers the incidence of AIDS. Yeah? So the or primary that's outcome is still education, but that's the secondary outcome would be as like a health behavior. That's, that's a good way. Would you like to annotate Oh, we I mean, I would just share this I would just try and, Yeah, sure. So, like, I this is a think, group exercise. Yeah. <laughs> well, I say like the primary edu is the education because that's the girls' education. Gender. Uh, so you want to right primary because I, I yeah, understand yeah. that. The primary good. outcome would be uh, education. So, um, but. Uh, Okay. That means years in school education or academic. Well, that that can be di like that can be subdivided into like a s sub questions. Like for example, uh, the output one of the output would be expected out output would be the increase of percentage of enrollment. Um, so for example, like some school would never get to even be to attend school at all.
Okay, I don't want to interrupt too much because you're getting on so swimmingly. Let me just run through the remainder of the questions on the exercise. They're up here on the board. Hello. Okay, just take a minute. So I think quite a few groups have moved on already. And you've gone to question three and four over here about filling in the row, row headings, which are the cases, and the column headings, and then identifying where in the matrix you're identifying the main question and the sub-questions that will form the body of your review. Uh, you may think I need more than one matrix to do that, and that may well be true. In pharma field schools, for example, I've presented the, the matrix just for targeting, which is one chapter of the analysis. Uh, so you might want several matrices, and you may, for the purposes of subsequent exercises, focus on one of those matrices, if that's the way you decide to go. Once you've identified where the questions, in, questions are being answered, I ask you to fill in the, the row, all the cells in the row, for at least two cases. Filling in the row for two cases, so each cell in the row, with examples of the type of evidence you'd expect to be collecting to fill in that cell. And this might be quantitative or it might be qualitative. So in the example of the targeting, basically we're saying they target women or they target crops. It's a coding exercise. Straightforward coding, you can add up the numbers that use target particular groups or you can add up the numbers that use categorical targeting. So it's a fairly traditional coding exercise. Other parts of the evidence might be more qualitative in nature. So the barriers of facilitators, as we call it in SR language, tends to come more from qualitative studies, and so that sort of evidence is also being captured in the various cells in the matrix. Having filled in a couple of rows of cases of evidence that you would get, then I want you to reflect on where would this evidence come from? What's the source of that evidence? So what type of study is it coming from? Remember, you're doing review, so you're relying on reviewing existing primary sources, that have gone out and done analysis, which type of primary study, what sort of type of source are you reviewing to get the different bits of data in your different cells? And of course, the type of evidence you get will be different for different columns, quite possibly. And the sources of data will be different for different columns. And it may even be different within a single column. You might have different data sources for evidence in a single column, in a single cell. And then crucially, which I didn't talk about this morning, is how would you assess the quality of this evidence? What are your inclusion <coughs> criteria? Because we use very rigorous criteria, inclusion criteria for our quantitative effectiveness analysis. So for the qualitative part, we can't just say, oh, well, I met a bloke in the pub and he told me this. <laughs> yeah? It's got to have the same degree of rigor. So what will your inclusion criteria be for the different types of evidence that you're including in your cells that you put there? And those criteria, of course, will vary according to what the evidence is and the evidence source. That's the crucial challenge, really, in doing a, a mixed method theory-based quantitative qualitative review. You're going to have different inclusion criteria for different types of evidence. And there's far less consensus on what those criteria are once you move beyond effectiveness. And finally, the question, if you get to it, you can't see down here, um, how... How, if at all, does the evidence matrix contribute to your understanding of effectiveness? The SR question in the end is probably an effectiveness question. All of this contributes to actually your understanding or answer to that question. So in your case, how do you think what you've been doing in looking at the matrix helps contribute to understanding of effectiveness? Now, there are quite a lot of different timetables for this session going around, but the one I've, that was emailed at lunchtime says we're going from 1.30 to 2.45. So my plan is that you should keep doing these exercises in your groups till 2.30. So half, half 30 minutes more. Okay? So off you go. Thank you. You had a question. Um, we're a little confused about the talent of the
Experience as entrepreneurs previously. Yeah, what about age? Because, and also things like uh, uh, that sort of risk taking behavior or something like that that might be able to just age in general. Anything to do with my Yeah. Um, I'm just going to use it like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, can, we can maybe know the um, study text or something. Yeah. Because there's the other one. Yeah. Well, there's about three versions of the time management. It's had to be recently. Can you read what you have here now? I can read it. Yeah, can you read it for us? Yes. Uh, the type of microcredit, gender of the recipient, type of business, geographic region, 
we're in rural versus urban, entrepreneurs versus established, current household income, age of recipient. Okay. Um, I was wondering, is there something in like, aside from these types of... Yeah, 
Send up the paper they they start. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it takes some concentration. Right. I'll leave that to you. Okay. What's going on and you implement it. Yes. Okay. okay. Right. What? Pass on the papers. Make sure people pass on the papers. One group to another. No, you just have to, you have to supervise it. Yeah, from one group to another. Okay. Right. Make sure it's going on. Two more minutes.